Hey everyone, it's now dusk on November 24th, 2023, and we're going to see if we can find some moose out on the logging roads of far northern New Hampshire. We got enough snow on the ground now that it looks like the snow plow did go down this logging road. We also got an almost full moon up there in the sky, so once the sun goes, does go down, in like the next 20 minutes, half hour, it should be almost completely dark. We might be able to see some moonlight even if we shut our lights off. So I think it's already dark enough that I'm gonna turn the off-road lights on. It made it a little better. High beams made it a little better too. This is the time of the day. The moose will be most active around dusk in the early evening is when all the moose are usually out and about walking down the road because it's far easier for them to travel on the road than tripping over things in the woods. Especially when we start getting deeper snow in the woods, there'll be a lot of moose walking the roads because it takes them a lot of energy to be going through the woods when the snow gets really deep. In far northern New England, you can get some deep snowpack. I did a camping video last year in a teepee where I had to dig out snow that was three feet deep to get to the ground. Actually, we did that twice. There's certain areas of far northern Maine where the snowpack can be more than four feet. The road actually feels pretty smooth having a little bit of snow. It helps cover up the potholes, but there are still a couple big potholes, and I love that crunching sound. All the slush is hard.
slippage. Just making sure because this looks pretty packed down from the log trucks. I don't see any evidence that there's actual log truck tracks, but they're, they are definitely cutting down areas around here. So I assume. We could still see log trucks out because it's only 4.30. It just gets dark early this time of year. There's a big hole in the road.
it's horrible. You can see there's just thousands and thousands of potholes, the whole thing. Hopefully the road improves. This has always been a wet groundwater active section of road, and that's why it, this is always a mess. But a couple more miles, it should get smoother. That's usually how this road is. Also, there's not as many potholes the further you get out on the logging roads because there's not a lot of tourists that are willing to go out that far. Once you get a good distance out there, a lot of people don't like being away from the signal or they just don't have enough gasoline to make it out there comfortably. safer going a little bit faster at night because you'll see the headlights of anyone else that might be around the corner but you also got to be wary of moose moose aren't stupid like a deer a deer will just jump out in front of you when it sees you coming but a moose when they get hit it's usually already standing in the road around the corner because they're dark they blend right in with the night and that's how you hit them but moose usually walk slow. They don't leap around like a deer, so they're not as big of an issue. Yeah, this has got to be logging shift getting off, because it's 
it's around 5 o'clock. Some of these companies do have a third shift. Not many of them, though. That one there had a tag on the front of it. Uh, firefighter truck. Firefighter's personal truck. traffic I've ever actually seen, not only that I filmed, although some of these might just be hunters in the area, because that one there had Vermont plates, Vermont is at least 100 miles away, I think, no, that's wrong, I forget how skinny the top of New Hampshire is, but still, a couple hours, there's no highways up around here, so everything takes forever to get around. I typically don't use it because it, that eats the MPG. 
even what I'm driving through right now, it's barely affecting anything. I think I said it was I was getting 21 when I started. Now I'm getting 19.5 mpg, which is very good for these road conditions. And it's mainly because I'm going slow and not hitting the gas a lot.
that usually means that water is sitting in the road or there's a water related issue. A lot of times that will show us where the beavers are. They recently did a good amount of signage on this road. There never used to be these warning signs telling you a bridge was coming up. They put the, the warning signs because some people do drive very fast out here and they need that couple second notice there before the narrow bridge comes up. A lot of these bridges are also brand new. When I first started on these roads, they were gigantic culverts where the water overwhelms them and starts digging around them, collapsing the road. But now they're all bridges because of that. This section of road might not be plowed at all. That might just be the tired marks pushing it over. Now are we gonna slip down the steep hill here? No, it's not that bad yet. This road's definitely not plowed. I'm just going down it because it's kind of snowy. Maybe we'll see a moose. I'll turn around at the first fork, I think. Or actually, I'm gonna go down the first fork. It's a little grown in. Maybe there might be moose down there. I know there's some swamps and water. It doesn't go very far, though. The sky looks beautiful. human tracks and yeah it's some one other person it looks like went up here this is a very narrow road maybe we'll find someone camping down here I'm pretty sure those are human tracks in the middle but maybe mixed with moose Another big snowstorm. These will all be unpassable, these roads. The sky looks really beautiful. See, this area kind of looks like an overgrown Christmas tree farm because they actually replanted this section. I definitely see tracks of maybe a coyote or a bobcat, something smaller walking. Probably a coyote. Tamarack trees. Needles all dropped. This is 
a pretty tight road. look like two sets of tracks in and out so I don't expect to find anyone here straight ahead right there the road gets narrower and narrower until you have to turn around and I can tell by the crooked tire marks someone had to back up with a couple errors right there just like the last time I did it it looks like the road keeps going, but it becomes narrow in like a couple hundred feet and you can't do anything. I often come down here because there's a culvert pipe on this abandoned section of road right here that I like to come look at because we always unclog one that's like a mile upstream. Now I'm spinning and stuck, so now I got a four wheel drive and we should be good. Oops, that was a neutral right there. There, four wheel drive, no problem at all. There we go. And that's the end of the line there. Who knows who you can find out on these roads? There might be a moose on the way back. Feels like I'm driving through sleet. Now if I took a left, that eventually becomes a dead end. I could make it maybe another five miles or so down there if I really wanted to. All right, so if I did take a left right there, that goes maybe another five miles until I would have to turn around. It just gets narrower and more muddy and treacherous the further you go out there. The last time I went, it got to the point where I was driving through grass hired in the hood since no one else does it. And there's a couple little seasonal cabins out there that are probably only used in the summer, but otherwise a snowmobile would be able to get down here pretty easily. The moon is nice and bright now.
drive through it. Yeah. There's a lot of ice. And I'm not going to drive through it when the ice is thick. Really thick, because that's how you break off a valve stem and lose your air pressure. I might get metal valve stems at some point, but I don't do things like that often. So it doesn't really matter.
machines don't get stuck. They don't have to worry about mud. They can run heavier double wide trucks. They can log inside of swamps and marshes without getting stuck. But it does get bitterly cold out here. It's always colder out here than what they forecasted. did an unclogging here last week it was a fun one the ice started cracking like crazy this is the culvert right here yeah it's all snow covered now I can tell the water's still nice and low I don't want to get out for a moment and take a look at it I doubt there's gonna be any car coming by but I can move fast just in case Wow I almost slipped and fell stepping out of the car these roads are actually sheer ice, but having studded tires does make a big difference, I'm realizing. Studded tires on my old car didn't feel like they were doing very much, but yeah, this is sheer ice right here. This dark spot that looks like it's sandy. It's actually sheer ice, but I guess studded tires with a heavy vehicle do a lot more pushing them in because I weighed just over 4,000 pounds last time I went to the weight station. I added about at least 500 pounds to the truck when I bought it by getting a second gas tank and steel bumpers. So this is the pipe we unclogged last week. You see it got hit by an excavator at some point. The water completely refroze. It hasn't snowed yet, it appears. A lot of this ice we actually smashed and sent it through there for fun. That was a lot of fun. If I get down, can we see anything in the pipe? you guys see anything maybe you guys can see it maybe you can't I couldn't see the screen but we got a piece stuck in there it bottomed out in the middle of the pipe like a tractor trailer on the train tracks actually because the pipe has a little lump in it when they installed it not really their fault it was so muddy the road could have deformed just by heavy trucks going over you know the wheelbase of the gigantic truck pushing down leaving the top the middle section up a little bit that's why the pipe can't work as efficiently as you would expect it to. Yeah, it is pretty cold out there. And I almost slipped and fell because I didn't realize how good the studded tires were working. Now, chains are really only needed when the snow gets super deep or it's absolute sheer ice. Then the studs don't do anything if they can't touch the bottom. I want to see what happens if I take off try to take off fairly fast see if I spin at all yeah I absolutely just did a, a little four-wheel burn out there and I didn't even take much gas but when I do my brake checks it barely slides but it's slippery enough to almost fall down stepping out the door
is what's bad. We just went over a gigantic culvert that's completely clogged with logs. Actually, I should have done it last time I was out here, and I'm going to do it right now, to be honest, because the last time I was out here, I was thinking to myself, I can't do this myself. I also cannot bring a chainsaw out here myself. I could bring a chainsaw, but I would destroy a chainsaw blade since all the logs are covered in frozen mud. You never want to touch dirt or sand with a chainsaw. You'll ruin the blade literally instantly. So I can't do it myself. But I'm going to go out right now and I'm going to mark this whole area with orange ribbons to hopefully have the logging company do it before the spring thaw. But at least I tried to save their roads. So I'm going to step out for a minute and do a little bit of that stuff. All right, I'm going to step outside and hang up a bunch of ribbons. Thankfully, it's not windy. Gotta walk slowly out there, the road is slippery. Now, hopefully the road crews see all this commotion and get out to look at those pipes and figure out what all this commotion is about. Now I don't have to feel bad if there are road washes out because I marked it and the employees will see this because they're actually logging on the road at the moment. They should see all that, no problem. certainly wash out if that happens it washed out completely two years ago right here in this dip is where the water was all crossing and back there at the actual pipe had a big bunch of erosion that not too many vehicles would be able to safely go through and I would never drive through that because there could be a hollow spot after such an event so I feel better that I, now that I marked that because when I was editing my last video where I was showing all that blockage and stuff over there I kind of felt bad that I didn't mark it because usually I would mark that stuff without a second thought. So now we did it. 
if we can get an excavator in there. If they are, don't unclog that and we have a typical spring thaw, that road will be gone. They have two pipes underneath there, each of them eight feet. One is basically 100% blocked. The other one is about 40% blocked and that won't be able to handle the water. Definitely not. And that will clog up completely, I'm sure, with the debris that is riding with the spring thaw flood. So before tonight, I, I never really thought studs did too much. They definitely help, so I, when I get winter tires, I'll have them put in. They don't cost too much to have a tire studded, so I do it. It definitely does something, but now I'm realizing with a heavier truck, it does a lot more than I thought because the weight is pushing the studs more. This road, it's enough to slip outside and fall down, but I barely feel it breaking fast. There's a bunch of tracks on the edge of the road likely moose and deer. I see a bunch of something tracks over there. As soon as we come across there's like a logging camp up here. I will, oh no, a logging operation. I will, that's where I'll probably end tonight's video. I'm making better time than I thought right now because these roads are very smooth. So I can go about 30. You see somebody else marked it because the edges of the road are slipping. The embankment is too, sleep, too steep and not being held together on that culvert. Right here you can see how eroded the road is. A lot of rocks. You can see where water's traveling because the grader pushed over a pile of dirt and rocks so the water can't make it to the ditch so it rides down the road instead. This area needs some work from the excavator to dig the ditch a bit. Looks like wind might be picking up a little teeny bit. I see leaves blowing across the road at this point. The road now.
I literally just slid for like maybe 20 feet there without stopping. Let's try it again. Yeah, now the ice is a bit worse. perfect traction if I'm over on the white. I love the sound. It's, it sounds like sleet pellets getting thrown up into the wheel wells. You hear that?
find someone camping at the end of it we have to turn around basically where the camp is because there's nowhere else to turn around this road is very narrow cannot pass anyone really you never know we might find someone down here at least a couple of cars have gone down here since it snowed truck would come here it has enough enough room for the 18 wheeler to turn around and you see all the openings in the woods a log skid would drag a bunch of logs back to the truck that's all it was this was just a turnaround circle for a log truck but it is a good place to camp a whole ton of firewood in those clearings because they cut off all the branches and they don't take those anymore they just want the trunk of the tree the trunk of the tree goes off to the sawmill Maybe it goes to the paper mill to make pulp. Then the edges of the tree, the bark, all gets turned into wood chips, sent on a truck to a wood-burning power plant. Northern New England is over 90% clean energy, meaning wood-burning power plants, which is almost completely renewable because the trees will eventually grow back. It's not completely renewable because you're still using fuel for the equipment, hauling it to the paper mill, to the power plant. I know my old car wouldn't have made it down this road. That hump in the middle is so high.
or the shape of a ditch or a rock. That's how I find a lot of these places. Sometimes I get lost out here at night, but usually only for 10 or 20 minutes in the day. I don't ever get lost. I haven't yet. Just at night sometimes it's confusing, especially if I haven't been on a road in a couple months. Because logging it makes the entire area look different. The moon is very bright. Let's shut everything down and have ourselves a little quick look. It lights, everything's off. Let's dim the lights in here. Yeah, look, you can even see it on the camera. You can tell where the road is. I don't even have my yellow lights in the front on, the positional lights. And look, I, I could drive like this for quite a while if I had to. I could see quite well. You can even see it on the camera amazingly.
Webster. Going about 30. A lot of those icy corners, I was going a bit slower. This is not the road I'm looking for, is it? No, I think that's somebody's driveway. Like a cabin or something in there. And now we just went through some signs that say right now we're in a wildlife area. That being said, they're still allowed to log in. Because to a lot of animals, the big open clearings are actually beneficial. Because before the forest grows back, for quite a few years, it'll be a field full of berry bushes. That attracts a lot of animals and bears. That's one massive tree we're going by right there. Another gigantic lumber tree, white pines. They'll leave a couple mature ones standing, hoping it drops seeds and replants. That's the lazy way of doing it. Or someone just like that tree. pressure is correct on those trailers they will appear half flat and when a tire is half flat it's flexing every time it spins and that constant flexing is generating heat which melts the ice and it immediately refreezes into this skating rink the skating rink of ice see that I cannot stop I have to go really slowly to successfully stop on this hill but the ice should actually stop once we get by the logging operation, wherever that is. And any spot where the hill 
is pretty steep, I'm going to keep tires off of that ice. But I can see the studs are helping a lot on the tires. Snow's getting deeper here. I don't think they plowed it. It's just completely packed and melted by the trucks into this skating rink. There's not much edge to get on, so I'm just going to go really slow around the corner. If I do slide, I almost guarantee I'm just going to stop right over in the edge, going really slow. See how the road's tipping to the left? Don't want to tip or go down there. It looks like we're driving over a culvert, and there's definitely water right there to my left, and we went by it. Now the road's a little better. Just keep the tires off the black spots you're seeing. This is a very bad road right now. Just went through another junction, but we're going the same way that the log trucks are going, so we continue to have this ice. And I'm going to go nice and slow now. Keep it nice and slow on these hills. No sudden movements. Nice and slow with the tires in the snow, so I can at least stop or not start sliding backwards. This is a big hill I'm going up. A lot of ice. See, I got this little light monitor and it's showing the pattern of exactly what it's doing outside. And I just run a wire along the floor all the way to the back of the vehicle. That little control panel's stickers it came with were garbage, so I just put a big squirt of hot glue underneath it. And hot glue is good to use in a car because it cracks off of the plastic easily if you ever want to remove it without leaving any sort of mark like a super glue would do. It also, in the summer, it might melt off. Not in my area, but if I ever happen to be in a place that has 100 degree heat, it might melt and fall off. That's okay. Hot glue is very useful. When I was a little kid, my dad used to tell me it was just for crafts and doing things like that, but it's very handy for filling things, like holes in projects. It's good for sticking things, like I have vents on the edges of my roof that the squirrels chewed a bunch of holes through. I just took little screens, pieces of small, small chicken wire with scissors, and then I stuck it up there, hot glued it right to the other screen, and hardens it. Works perfect. That works for so many good things. Hot glue is really easy to do with a lot of projects. Now I'm going down a hill that's covered in black ice. Let's do a slight brake check. I have almost no control here. That brake check was done at like f uh, maybe 8 miles an hour. So I'm going to keep it at least under 10 miles an hour here while slowly making it down this very steep hill because if I start moving I'm not going to stop. A heavier vehicle has it takes more to get sliding, but if you get sliding, you're not going to stop nearly as easy. So I'm completely on the black ice now, but I'm going real slow, four miles an hour or so. I see some animal tracks right there, probably a coyote. Coyotes seem to walk back and forth like that. A lot of the 
big cats that live around here, a lynx or the bobcat, it's usually one foot in front of the other, so I think that's probably a coyote. Now the snow is in this area is down, it's back up to about three, maybe four inches again. And we are probably at higher elevations now. See a lot of footprints now, it looks like. Going up a steep hill. Don't hit the gas too hard. Good, I'm not sliding nice and easy. Here we are, we've come to the logging operation. I highly doubt they're doing third shift. Sometimes they do. Some guys like working in the middle of the night when it's cold. These machines have massive lights. Lights up the whole forest. That's lumber right there. That's not pulp wood. Ooh, they got some massive temporary culverts for their log skid roads. If you saw those off to the side, they just throw them in for that log skid to the left can get in there. That's what gets down the very rugged clearings that the trucks never go down. That machine drags all the logs back to the road. Now we're going to go very slow. You see, this is a very steep hill covered in black ice. I don't think it would be catastrophic if I started moving, but I'd probably get stuck in the ditch right there. But we're fine. My tires are not on that ice. Just keeping it really slow, like five miles an hour for the time being. I think because it's dark, I did pass that very narrow road I was going to go down. I do think I probably passed it. But that's the same road I did in the tree sap video last time, so it doesn't matter too much. I just thought maybe there might have been a moose down there. So that road, if I continued the sap video, it forks into two dead ends. Not too exciting. I wish we had some swampy roads in this area. Despite how bad the road conditions are, MPG is still doing very well considering I'm at 18.3. I did stop a couple times. Now I can go a little faster. We're up to 15, 18. I see a bunch of log trailers in the road. It means I 100% missed what I was looking for because it's dark. Ooh, very steep hill coming up again. Completely covered in black ice. Now I'm going like two miles an hour just for safety because look what happens if I hit the brake. See, zero control. I cannot come to a complete stop right now. And we're in the clear. Now we're going up an even steeper hill. And I'm going to put my tires on. Because I might be, get into a spin out. And I don't want to start moving backwards uncontrollably. So I'm just, just going to stay off of the ice completely. It's the safest thing to do. And that's what the last couple people did, I can see. I'm surprised they didn't put anything down on this. A lot of times they won't even chain up the log trucks. A lot of times they will actually just put gravel down with a spreader. Oh, look at this junction here. Is this the road here? No, no, this is not the road I was looking for. I thought maybe, maybe, no, it's not. So we're gonna continue on the road now. No, not the road I was looking for. I do. I, I missed it. I definitely missed it. Here we are on the sheer ice. Let's see what happens if I try to take off fast. Let's test it. I can tell it's sheer ice. See that? Did a little burnout. You can see I slid to the side. But if I take off slowly, the studs do their job. Not a problem. Let's take off slowly and gain speed, not slipping at all. I don't mind spinning the tires a little bit for fun on ice, but I would never try that on bare ground. Stupid wear and tear.
not too much to hug on the edge. Oh, well, yeah, there is a good amount. And this hill's not that bad. Just got to be careful. I don't want to be impatient on these type of roads. Because once you get going uncontrollably on one of these, it won't matter if you get to the snow. A little bit of speed, it won't stop you either. Even the snow area, I'm feeling a little slip. windshield so for that reason I had to ask the company what kind of extension do I need because I didn't think I needed both that's a lot of space for both so I had a little extension to the back and I just run the wires along the floor and tuck them underneath the rugs I'm not putting it in permanently like tucking it into the ceiling and I didn't want to pay the amount to have it put in professionally so this was only 40 bucks this system So, the way this area works is that last little intersection you saw me turn into, nose into, and then right back out that I thought was where I wanted to go. So, what we're now on is a one-way forward. The log truck turns around and comes back out of there. Then it picks up from that logging site and out. That's how this section of road is working. We should come up to a road in a few minutes that you'll see all the log trucks are going down all this log traffic is going down so I think because without them melting the roads from all their heat I feel like where we're actually going it should improve a lot the road it should be like what we were driving on at the beginning of the video I assume now this is a decent decline here so slow it down doing 15 now slower on this corner. I don't trust that ice. I see some animal tracks. What kind of animal tracks? No, those to the left. No, I think they're all human tracks. I just looked out the side window. The moonlight's bright enough and I I can see heels. It's just, it looks weird how that person was walking with their feet pointed out to the sides instead of forward. Maybe it's icy. Maybe that's why they're walking that way. If you do walk sideways, if you have ice, it helps you gain traction. Now this next junction, we just saw the sign. This might be where all the log trucks are going. Yes, it is. This right here to the left. The log trucks are all going to the left. And look, we got some fully loaded trailers there that they haven't taken out yet. So we're going to go to the right and let's see if the road conditions improve because all the logs should be going to the left because there's a bridge with a load limit to the right that none of these trucks are allowed across only snowmobiles and passenger vehicles yeah look fully loaded with that looks to me like lumber logs maybe not I see shovels attached to the back of both of these rigs or the trailers and you see in case of mud you see they have logs underneath the landing gear I see a big brush on both of them too. That must be for cleaning off the lights, cleaning off the fifth wheels of snow, whatever else. They have to shovel maybe if they need to change a tire. Those log trucks, I don't see spare tires under those ones. 
probably because we're not super deep in the wilderness, but I know super duper deep in the wilderness, they got to be able to change their own tires. I don't see any tires on those. A lot of the log trucks, they keep a spare on the back of the cab also. Yeah, road conditions improved a bit now that the log trucks aren't coming down this part. So I think this is where we'll end the video for tonight, everyone. I hope today's video was interesting, everybody. Thanks for watching and have a great night. It feels very late, but it's not. It's only 6.20.